There has been a lot of talk recently about 15-minute cities, from conspiracy theories to how they can make your city more livable and environmentally friendly. Since the concept of 15-minute cities includes cycling, it intersects nicely with cargo bike use. So, I thought I'd jump on the bandwagon and talk about 15-minute cities. In this episode of Bike Bike Nudge Nudge, I will give a quick overview of the 15-minute city and how I conceptualize it. I'll give an example of what isn't a 15-minute city, and finally, I'll discuss my experience using my back feats in my 15-minute city. The concept of the 15-minute city is credited to an article written by Carlos Moreno in 2021. It's actually not a new concept about good urban form. Jane Jacobs was advocating for similar good urban form back in the 1950s. The premise behind the 15-minute cities is that you should be able to accomplish most of your daily tasks within a 15-minute walk, bike, or transit ride from your home. Jobs, groceries, doctors, bakeries, pubs, parks, schools, etc. should all be near to where you live. The misconceptions about 15-minute cities occur when Oxford puts out a poor transportation management plan that gets confused with a 15-minute city plan. As with all good urbanist policies, my city gets it wrong again by releasing a plan that includes districts with boundaries, so the conspiracy theorists have protested here. When I think of 15-minute cities, I think like a transportation geographer. In geography, we have the concept of geographic accessibility. Picture where you live. That's the center of your catchment area and is unique to you. Everywhere you can walk, bike, or reach by transit within 15 minutes is your catchment area. All the places you want to go are your destinations. The more destinations you have, the better accessibility you have. Just like there's no hard separation of good and bad accessibility, in my mind, there's no hard boundary between living in a 15-minute city or not. At some point, you realize you don't have to drive to accomplish most of your daily tasks, and you think, yeah, I live in a pretty good 15-minute city. Claims that your city is going to destroy bridges or build walls to seal you in close to your home are nonsense. All your city should be doing is incentivizing places where more people can live, work, shop, and go to school. If you want to live near there and leave your SUV at home, that's great. If you want to live near there and still drive everywhere, okay. You do you, but there should be slower, narrower roads and reduced amount of parking with none of it being free. If you want to live far from there and be forced to drive everywhere, that's also your choice. So what does a 15 minute city not look like? Here, I'm using open route service to show how far someone could bike if they lived at that red marker, which is a random location in the deep suburbs of my city. If you live in such an area and don't drive, your mobility isn't restricted by fences, but by large, busy roads. All the neighborhoods are twisting cul-de-sacs, cut off from each other by freeways. The blue lines in this map are shared use paths. You can see a lot of gaps in the network and, as you will see, the quality of these paths may not be great. On the satellite imagery, you can see that the area is not mixed use. It is mostly a monoculture of houses. With one exception, the green spaces seem to be empty fields and remnants of old wetlands. There are a few old schools and two power centers in the catchment area with little else to attract people not in SUVs. This is the bigger power center and it is hostile to people not in SUVs. The roads are wide and the sidewalks don't go to all the fronts of the stores. There is no bike infrastructure although the speed limit was reduced a few years ago to 40 km per hour. The bike infrastructure to reach the power center is just wide sidewalks, which my city likes to claim are shared use paths. Kudos to whoever designated this double left turn lane as a dedicated bike lane and had that propagate all the way to Google. If you lived in this suburb, you would not be living in a 15 minute city. Well, you could claim you do, but it's really a low quality one. Let's now look at how a cargo bike could enhance your life if you do live in a 15 minute city. In a 15 minute city, you're supposed to be able to accomplish many of your daily tasks by bike. A cargo bike just lets you carry more stuff while doing those tasks. Much of cargo bike marketing is towards families with young children. Nearly every manufacturer's website I've seen has pictures and videos of a fit young woman riding a cargo bike with her cute small children. I completely agree with these images being used since children lack independent mobility so must be transported by a parent. The images do reinforce stereotypes that women are more responsible for child care. Also, research I've seen has found that women tend to have less access to SUVs. A cargo bike is much cheaper to buy and maintain than an SUV, so living in a 15-minute city with a cargo bike may greatly increase a young mother's mobility and decrease her social exclusion. For me, my children are older. They have much more independent mobility, but they still enjoy riding in our cargo bike. 
I mainly use the cargo bike when we need to accomplish a journey further or faster than they're willing to go on their own by bike. We also use it when one part of a journey is done using a different mode of transportation. For example, my eldest gets a ride to school, and my youngest may take the bus when the weather in the morning is not good for biking. I can pick them up after school by cargo bike. With current construction in my city, it is actually faster to bike to my youngest school than drive during rush hour. With my children's schools and some of their more important destinations within a 15 minute bike ride, the cargo bike makes it easier to ferry my teenagers to places they need to go when they don't ride their own bikes. Another reason that a cargo bike makes living in a 15 minute city easier is when you have to haul more cargo than you could with a regular bike. The grocery store is an obvious destination and I've shown grocery shopping for a family of four before on this channel. I've done trips to Costco as well and I'm planning an upcoming video on that. This spring, I've also made two trips to dispose of some household waste. I had one trip to do some home repairs that weren't at my home. I've also picked up food at restaurants a few times this spring. Picking up food doesn't require a big cargo bike but I usually take a helper to hold the food so nothing spills. Living in a 15 minute city just means living somewhere that gives you more options on how to get to your destination. Increasing the density of places to live, work, learn, or shop makes the destinations you need the most more accessible by walking, biking, or taking transit. Proper walking and biking infrastructure makes these areas of your city more pleasant and encourages people to leave their SUV at home. Building big roads and free parking reduces choice by making the SUV the only way to get to your destination safely. Your city isn't about to lock you in your house and take away your SUV. Your city also isn't going to densify to Hong Kong levels anytime soon. The changes to your city will take a long time. For those that want to drive their oversized pickup truck everywhere, big roads and asphalt seas of parking aren't going to disappear overnight. So that's my look at 15 minute cities. Please consider giving this video a like if you enjoy having a choice of destinations close to where you live. You can also leave a comment about how you use your cargo bike for errands close to your home. If you want to see my trip for groceries, you can click here on the closing screen.